so this video is a brief description of radioactive decay. Uh, so, despite the strength of the forces that hold nucleons together to form an atomic nucleus, many nuclides are unstable and will spontaneously change into other nuclides by radioactive uh, And it is possible to transform all types of nuclei uh, by reactions with nucleons or through colliding with other nuclei. Uh, and also all complex nuclei came into being through successive nuclear reactions in the first few minutes after the Big Bang and also the rest in stellar interiors. So elements can change to other elements. Uh, so for example, if a nucleus undergoes alpha or beta decay, its atomic number will change and the nucleus will become a different element. Uh, also, the energy liberated during radioactive decay comes from within the individual nuclei without external excitation, okay? unlike the case of atomic radiation. Uh, so, how is this possible? It's possible because of the equivalence of mass and energy, uh, as shown by Einstein's equation. Uh, also, radioactive decay is a statistical process and it obeys the laws of chance. So, there is no cause-effect relationship in the decay of a particular nucleus. There is only a certain probability per unit time. Uh, and this uh, kind of process naturally uh, fits in the framework of quantum physics, unlike classical physics. Uh, so, the radioactivity of an element arises from the radioactivity of one or more of its isotopes. And isotopes are, uh, are vari varieties of an element that differ in the number of neutrons. So, uh, the, these uh, varieties have the same number of protons as the element, but different numbers of uh, so, most elements in nature have no radioactive isotopes, uh, although such isotopes can be prepared artificially in the lab, okay? Uh, so, for example, potassium have some stable isotopes and some radioactive ones. Um, and a few uh, elements, such as uranium, have only radioactive isotopes. Uh, so, three different kinds of radiation were found from radionuclides, okay? Um, and they are called alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Uh, so, alpha particles are actually uh, helium uh, nuclei with two protons and, and two neutrons, okay? Uh, and beta particles are electrons. And uh, gamma uh, are high-energy photons. Uh, so, later in time, uh, positron emission and electron capture were added to the list of decay modes. Uh, so, the radiations from uh, a radium sample can be analyzed with the help of a magnetic field. In this case, this magnetic field is directed into the screen, okay? Um, so, alpha particles are def uh, deflected to the left because they are positively um, charged and uh, beta particles to the right, and gamma uh, direction is not affected. Uh, and this figure shows how alpha particles can be stopped by a piece of cardboard, um, and beta particles can penetrate the cardboard um, and can be stopped by a sheet of aluminum. Uh, but for gamma rays, even a thick slab of lead may not stop the rays. Uh, so, this table here, uh, it shows the five ways in which an unstable nucleus can decay. And also, it shows the reason for the instability. Uh, so, the reason for alpha decay is that the nucleus is too large. And so, the emission of an alpha particle uh, will reduce the size of the nucleus. Uh, so, the atomic number of the new element is less by 2, uh, and the mass number is less by 4. Uh, and in the case of beta, beta decay, uh, the reason for the decay is that the nucleus has too many neutrons relative to the number of protons. So, 
the emission of an electron by uh, a neutron in the nucleus will change the neutron into a proton. Uh, and for the positron emission, uh, the reason uh, for the decay is that the nucleus has too many protons relative to the number of neutrons. Um, and the, uh, the emission of a positron uh, by a proton would change the proton into a neutron. Uh, so for electron capture, the reason is that the nucleus has too many protons relative to the neutrons. Um, and so the capture of an electron by a proton uh, will change the proton into a neutron. Uh, so if there are too many protons relative to, relative to neutrons, as in these two cases, the proton may either emit a positron and it will change into a neutron, or it may capture an electron and it will change into a neutron. Uh, and for gamma decay, the reason for the instability is that the nucleus has excess energy and the emission of gamma rays will reduce the energy of the nucleus. Uh, so an example of alpha decay is when a uranium nucleus of mass number 238 decays into a thorium nucleus of mass number 234. Uh, so this shows that elements are not unchangeable and that one element can change into another element. Uh, and this is a result of the theory of relativity and quantum physics which showed that uh, the reality around us at its core is an energy reality, right? Um, and this reality is much more fluid and dynamic than the fixed uh, material reality of rigid objects that was dominant um, during the time of classical physics. Uh, so this opened uh, new possibilities as seen by the modern day technology, but it will also open more possibilities that were thought to be impossible by classical physics. Uh, so an example of beta decay is uh, this decay. So this is um, uh, a helium isotope and it is unstable. Uh, because the most stable helium nucleus is uh, uh, HE42, okay? Uh, so this one, um, this isotope has four neutrons, but the stable one has only two, right? Uh, so the reason of instability in this case is the excess of neutrons. So we can expect that the um, this isotope will undergo a beta decay to become this lithium isotope, okay? Uh, so this lithium isotope has a neutron-proton ratio that is more consistent with stability. Uh, also, this unstable copper isotope can decay to nickel through positron emission. It also can decay to nickel through electron capture. Uh, so in the case of the gamma decay, uh, a nucleus can exist in states whose energies are higher than that of its ground state, okay, just like um, an atom. So an excited nucleus is denoted by the star, okay, and excited nuclei, they will return to their ground state by emitting photons whose energies correspond to the energy difference between the initial and final state, okay. Uh, and the photons emitted by nuclei range in energy up to several mega electron volts and are known as gamma rays, okay? Um, but in some cases, an excited nucleus may return to its ground state by giving up its excitation energy to one of the atomic electrons around it, okay? And this process is known as internal conversion. Uh, so most excited nuclei have very short half-lives, but a few remain excited for as long as several hours, and the long-lived uh, excited nucleus is called an isomer, okay? Uh, so this uh, excited nucleus of strontium uh, decay through gamma rays uh, to the ground state. Uh, so in the next video, I will talk about the half-life and the activity law, okay? So thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.